Hi, I'm James Davis. And I'm Claire Davis. We're the Midlife Mentors, here to lift a lid on how to achieve health and happiness. The balanced, no-nonsense way. Hello and welcome to the Midlife Mentors podcast. I'm James. I'm Claire and today we are doing this from Ibiza. It's blowing a hoolie outside yet again. James is potentially sitting in his pants doing this but we won't go into that. Don't tell people. (laughs) He's not really. Uh, I just wanted to make him feel uncomfortable. But today we are going to talk about habits. And the habits that will keep keep you healthy in both body and mind. Mm, but not just about good habits to cultivate, we're also going to deal with bad habits and how to break them or adjust them. Because uh, we do all have them, these things that were, come into our life and cause us a little bit of distress, throw us off course. So the way we're going to format today's podcast is talk a little bit about some of the bad habits that some of you might have that we certainly have had, sometimes still do have. <laughs> uh, and then in the second half, we're going to talk about how to cultivate new positive habits. Yeah, as I said, we're perfect. So we don't have any bad habits. No, but these are actually, what we want to do here is make you, this is the kind of purpose of that entire podcast series, really, is to make you feel like you're not alone, to make you feel that, you know, you are understood. And these are the habits that we come across all the time um, with clients and, um, you know, so forth. So what we want to do is share them with you talk to you about the impact they are having on your mental and physical health and then as James said talk about some ones to potentially replace them with or cultivate new ones. Mm. So without further ado. Yes we dive straight into the first habit which is a really common one we see with a, with a lot of clients particularly mid-age clients and that is poor sleep um, and that can play a massive part in your life. Uh, if you're not getting a good night's sleep, you probably know how grotty you can feel the next day, um, how you're going to perform worse at whatever you're doing, whether that's going to work, being around the house, you know, you can just feel terrible off the back of a bad night's sleep and for some people and become a chronic condition as well. Absolutely. So the habit is basically just going to bed too late. Mm. Um, and James and I do not suffer <laughs> from this one. Okay. Because if anyone out there um is listening that knows us very well even the ones that don't actually will know that james and i are like the oldest people we go to bed at like nine o'clock at night nine thirty at night and obviously in ibiza in the summer that causes a few issues because it's actually not even dark when we go to bed no thankfully we have blackout blinds so we can <laughs> shut the world out and, and get our heads down but we are literally that meme that says like you know oh shall we watch a movie and it's 7 30 and we're like no it's far too late already. what are you talking about um so yeah so the habit of going to bed too late um and the impact that that has so one of the things that you know, I, I've looked at a lot recently, um, especially with the midlife women that I'm working with, is, you know, a lot of them are having really disrupted sleep. And the problem is, the more tired uh, we are, there's been a lot of research about the fact that it lowers the hormone leptin, which is your hormone that says, I'm full. So the problem with that, obviously, is you're going to get the munchies throughout the day. You're going to actually eat more. So that poor sleep is directly correlated to you actually eating more because of those um, leptin-lowered hormones. And Um, there are studies actually linking uh, obesity to poor sleep patterns as well. Yeah, absolutely. But they're not sure which which is cause, which is effect, but certainly the two are linked. Completely. And obviously, when you have poor sleep, I think we've talked about this before as well, but it's um, you get a rise in your cortisol, which Mm. is your stress hormone, which again, um, in midlife, we do have an issue with laying on body fat and not being able to get rid of it. And unfortunately, uh, the rise in cortisol makes you actually hang on, especially to belly fat. So um, that's another one. There's, James did a bit of research around this. Um, This is an like incredible, I love this. This This was out this year, actually, from the University of South Florida. Uh, And they studied IT workers and they found that just 16 minutes less of sleep adversely impacted their performance. 
uh, and in a broader finding, they found that like just lack of sleep generally gave people worse judgment and made them more easily distracted. But hey, we've all experienced that, right? You've had that like terrible night's sleep, or you got to bed really late, and then no. the next day, <laughs> occasionally, I remember from my from my old, from my younger days. Yeah, then the next day, of course, it's much harder to concentrate. You are easily distracted. Uh, you know, your internet research into something really serious suddenly ends up looking at cats playing the piano or something. That's you thought jokes. I was going to say something else then, didn't you? <laughs> I really did have this horrible moment where I thought James was going to do a James and say something he really shouldn't. But well done. Cat's playing right. piano. You put parental controls in place. I, I have to. I have to, quite frankly. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so no surprise. Sleep, sleep impacts your performance the next day. Uh, and in fact, there was a study, I think two, two years ago, possibly, the University of St. Thomas in Minnesota, uh, 55,000 students they looked at and a night of poor sleep had the same negative impact on students grades as binge drinking drug abuse and abusive relationships which kind of puts it in perspective I guess some of those students might be rolling all those things together in one <laughs> night which would have really impacted them how do you separate them <laughs> so you know that that is the, one of the habits that we see a lot is is that going to bed too late and mm. we're also going to talk about um, how you know, that is impacted by the digital age as well. But we're going to talk about that. So one of those habits is going to bed too late. Again, just to reiterate, we are going to give you um, at the end, well, towards the end of this podcast, um, lots of habits to replace these things with and some helpful tips and hints that are practical that you can um, apply to your lifestyle. The next one... Well, I was just to say, we get it, right? We get it. You know, you've had like a long, hard day. Like, you're, you're buzzy. You sit down. You're just liking watching TV to, to numb your mind or whatever. And then you just watch, 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 watch. Before you know it, it's like 11 o'clock, 11.30. And then you're going to bed. But right. you're already thinking, oh, I've got to be up in like a few hours. So we get it. Um, but we're going to give you some tips on how to fix yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. So the next one, again... This potentially should have been number one because we see this all the time and that is the habit of reaching for the booze, Mm. the alcohol. So again, massively impacted by stressful lives. We use it so much as a sticky pasta and a crutch. Um, And again, this is a habit that James and I have now actually, you know, we've definitely got like more of a handle on um but it is one of those things that's easy to convince yourself it's a a habit that is just you know you go for it without even thinking you know that first glass of wine turns into a second glass of wine and the thing with habits is they are so subconscious you don't really even know you're doing it but the alcohol one does have i know it's very sociable and it does taste so good but it does have some really negative implications for your goals um, and the lifestyle that you want to lead. Yeah, so um, even moderate amounts are going to impact your, your body composition. You know, we'll find a lot of these habits are linked. So a lot of people will have that classic thing of like a glass of wine to go to bed. I mean, alcohol is actually a stimulant, so it will disturb your sleep as well, despite what you're thinking when you down that half bottle of red. Um, it will give you a poor night's sleep. Um, also, it has a hormonal effect on the body. So, again, it's going to play around with your leptin and ghrelin levels, which means that in the next day, you're going to be more inclined to reach for starchy, sugary foods, uh, and you'll feel more hungry than you would do normally. Uh, can it adversely affect your mood? It's actually a depressant. I know like the first drink can normally make you feel really good, <laughs> but uh, you know, over time, it actually brings you down as well, which also sounds very gloomy. I mean, a drink, we love a drink. so um, We do like it, a drink. It's, it's when it becomes like a regular habit, it is going to impact you psychologically and with your body goals as well. Absolutely. So on to the next one. Let's talk about food and comfort eating late mm. at night. Again, this is all around lifestyle and this is one, emotional eating, I did a post on this recently, but emotional eating is one of... The really, really difficult issues that we're dealing with, um, you know, into today's society, it can be driven by boredom, it can be driven by um, loneliness, it can be driven by stress, anything, but it's a really, really common thing now is comfort eating. Um, And I have to say, it's more common actually late at night because obviously we're on the run all day, we've got busy lifestyles, and then late at night, um, the habit is to reach for something that's quick, 
that you don't have to think about but that's actually going to make you feel good mm. and that's why we often go wrong is with the carbohydrates because actually it increases the serotonin in the brain so basically you're reaching for something to make you feel good to lift your mood um, to, to release that stress that you've had during the day so comfort eating late at night um, is a really really common thing that we do the problem with that obviously is we've talked about this before but very heavy carbs at night you're going to bed with those in your system mm -hmm. um, and your body isn't using up those carbohydrates um, which is essentially is sugar and then when they're not used it is laid down and stored as fat so again this is this is a habit that is really going against your your body goals your health goals um, you know, so that's well, that's one of the problems. You can talk about like it maybe eating at your desk on the run as well. Yeah. Like this is another thing we hear clients say all the time. So there's another thing, you know, we we live busy lives in the modern age, and we tend to like rush our daytime meals. Now I think very few of us actually have time to sit down and have a long les leisurely lunch. Actually, like they do in Spain, right? They got yeah. they got some of the lowest productivity in Europe. That's because they have a, like a, like a long time over lunch. And if you ever waited have... waited for food in a Spanish restaurant, you'll be familiar with this. But uh, in all seriousness, like a lot of us now, we're just grabbing something, even if it's like healthy food, like a salad or something, and you're just chomping it at your desk on the go, and you're not really giving it time to, to to get in. You're not eating mindfully, and this is why also we're seeing a rise in things like. IBS because it's not the food per se you're eating it's just like you're eating it in a rushed stressed manner I know and that also kind of relates to the relationship you have with food like James mentioned being mindful there but like you're not actually engaging with your food you might also be chomping down on it so quickly that you're actually this is not a very pleasant thing to say but you're creating like a lot of gas as well you're kind of eating with your mouth open potentially but you're gulping it down really quickly and you like james says you're not digesting it ah, but... that's what happens to you <laughs> oh it's going to be one of those podcast people i'm sorry <laughs> um but you know it's it's you, the relationship with your food you're it's about nurturing and nourishing your body and if you're just using it as like a simple fuel mechanism it's that relationship with the food is not the way it should be, basically. So that's another habit um, around food that we see a lot. Eating on the run, eating late at night, comfort eating. Again, we are going to give um, the tactics and hints and tips of the things to replace these habits with. So um, at the end, yes, we're going to we go. We, yes, we are. Next one. Negative thought patterns. So yeah. this is a really easy one to slip into, right? You know, we're, we're not really fully in control of our, what we like to call our monkey minds, which will run away, run away. You know, the voices in your head will give you all your guilt, your shame, you're not good enough. And it's really easy to get locked into those patterns. Uh, and of course, those kind of things are never ever gonna help you, but we all have them, we yeah. all have them, you know. It's that habit of thought. So these are habits of thoughts which then turn into habits of behaviour. So whatever you're thinking, the behaviour then follows. So, you know, we keep ourselves locked in what has been before rather than being present. We just keep replaying those stories that just, are, are you know, lock us in a feeling of that's what I am, that's what is. And actually that really, really stops us reaching our goals. It really stops us moving forward and expanding as we are meant to as human beings. Another one that um, is so, so prevalent, and it is one that I've been really vocal about, that I, I have struggled with and still have to kind of put in the reps in my mind to stop myself doing this, is self-sabotage. Okay, a lot of us can't lean in to joy and gratitude. We can't actually lean into believing that things are going well and things are changing and that we are doing well. So what we try and do our subconscious mind basically says, whoa, 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 you can't be that person. You remember the last time you tried that and you failed. You don't want to make a fool of yourself. And then that, that leads to you actually self-sabotaging the, the, the things that you're actually achieving. And this can be anything from having a routine in the gym that you're loving, for actually eating healthy food, to not drinking as much as you were. You know, we keep ourselves locked in that habit of thought and behavior and you know we've got all sorts of little things that we do to pull ourselves back there constantly next habit we're gonna touch on is the habit of digital slightly ironic you're probably listening to this on a digital device and <laughs> there there is a lot of good that can be out from digital but um i think too much with social media 
we're forced into a state of comparison. And listen, we all know the stories as well about you know, very, very intelligent people are working on algorithms to make it more addictive yeah. all the time. Uh, and again, this is a big thing for our clients. Uh, whether it's social media or just like that, that feeling they need to be checking emails all the time to be, to be informed, uh, you know, kind of obsessively checking the phone to see what's happening, what's happening, what's happening. Uh, it's definitely a big one. You know, if we're drawn into that, this is, this is one of the reasons in the modern world, like our cortisol levels mm. are raised all the time because it's keeping you in a state of, of medium stress all the time. So you're waiting for the next update, next update, next update. The next like the next, you know, actually people were stressing about the next thing they post. And this is quite, you know, this is something that I've had first-hand um, experience of. You know, a couple of years ago, I was getting incredibly stressed, wasn't mm. I, James? Like, incredibly stressed. I do the social media for 38. And I found myself just getting caught in the scroll hole, I call it, and feeling like the habit of just losing hours comparing myself you know, feeling quite negative about my own self-image, my own life. I haven't achieved this much. Their life looks so perfect. And, you know, it's a habit that these are all things that we need to, everything we're discussing are things that you need to bring awareness to, mm. okay? Awareness is power. That's why we're talking about them, to let you know that they're really common, that everyone out there is experiencing them, and that actually there is something that you can do. This is all in your mm. control. This is not out of your control, people. And the, the world of the digital is having such a negative impact on our mental and our physical health. You know, the whole body dysmorphia um, is rising. We've got young children uh, with more eating disorders than ever before, yeah. male uh, and female. Well, yeah, teen depression is, is like increasingly massively all the time, and that's all being driven by social media. Um, and these are habits of behavior. They are not out of your control. Um, so, again, we're going to give you hints and tips on this. But um, yeah, two, just more, two more bad habits to go and then we'll get habits. on to the positive stuff. So um, the next one we, is something that's really common with our clients is the not having time excuse, which really is a habit of poor time management. You know, we know you can uh, change your body composition 15 minutes a day regularly and people say they haven't got time time to do that. But actually, if you add up the time you're spending like watching Netflix, just watching yeah. like mindless television, you have got time in the day to achieve something and make changes. It's just like the perception you have is that I don't have time. Absolutely. And I always say, I can't find the time to do it. Well, that's because you're looking for it. You don't find it, you make it. Mm -hmm. And that's the difference between people that get what they want and the people that don't get what they want. And that's a really harsh thing to say, but it's so, so true. And it's true with your health, your career, anything. You don't like find it. It's not gonna lift, you're not gonna lift up a book and go, oh, there's more time. <laughs> You know, you have to make it, um, and that's something that I feel really, really strongly about, as you can tell. Mm. Got a little bit aggressive there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, the, la the last second habit is also a really oh. common one. We, we even do it ourselves. We're getting much better at managing it, but is the habit of going full throttle, then all off, uh, which it basically boils down to impatience, right? You know, you suddenly decide you want to achieve something. It might be a body goal, it might be a work goal, it might be a personal goal, and you go all out Hell at it. Ugh. But then you're neglecting other areas of the life, then again, guess what happens? You, you ping in that elastic band out, 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 to the point it's reached full stretch, and you go beowing back. Um, and it hits you in the face. Hits you in the face, and we see this all the time, the kind of yo yo, yeah. um, and people just getting stuck in this like mindset, and then like all the guilt and shame of not having achieved sets in. Totally. So, and it's, it's about being yeah. realistic. This is the thing, like, it's about being balanced and realistic. It's the same with anything. You go full throttle with, like, working, you know, 55 hours a week, whatever, like, not getting any sleep. You are going to rebound in the opposite direction. You go to the gym when, you know, every morning, five times a week, when you never really used to. You know, of course, if you're going full on, then full off, full on, full off, there is going to be repercussions. And that's why we say a balanced approach putting it as part of your lifestyle that's realistic for you. Which brings us nicely Yay. into the good stuff, the positive stuff, the habits to yeah. cultivate. So we're, we're going to run through those bad habits again and give you some tips on what you could be doing to adjust them, break them, change them, so your life's better in essence. So the first we look at is the, the sleep one and bed. And of course the obvious, obvious thing to say is just go to bed earlier. Yeah. Um, you know, there's no need to stay up till like 11.30, midnight, watching 
Love Island extra or whatever. Oh, that please awful don't. Stuff is. If any of you watch Love Island, <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna button it now actually, but. What are you doing? So um, there's loads of this. We all have a natural circadian rhythm and people do have genetic differences in it. But broadly, most people are biologically attuned to awake as the sun comes up and start to shut down as the sun goes down. That's how we've evolved and developed. Now, obviously, if you know you've got to get up at six for work every morning, but then you're staying up till midnight, guess what? You're not, not getting enough sleep a night. Most studies show you need between seven and a half and eight and a half hours sleep. More than that starts to be have negative repercussions, less than that, and negative re repercussions. Again, everyone's different, but those are the broad guidelines, seven and a half to eight and a half. So just make sure, if you know you've got to be up at a certain time, go to bed at least 45 minutes before the time that would give you eight hours of sleep. Sounds obvious, but do it. And just on that, I'm actually going off piste. Sorry, James. Um, on, on the whole going to bed earlier and kind of getting up earlier, one thing I would say, um, I have discussed this before, but I was the sort of person that I, I did actually consider myself as quite a night owl. Um, which by the, by, the, by the woo, by, by the woo, by the woo, by the way, is um, just really an excuse for... Um, not getting up earlier and actually being a bit lazy to be honest and actually not taking responsibility for the fact that that was in my control to become a morning person you can you are a morning person you can become a morning person and with regards to exercise you know there are loads and loads of studies that if you get up and you exercise in the morning you i mean apart from the fact that you feel awesome um, and then you get that kind of like serotonin kick the feel god hormones that gonna like kind of pump through the body there's also loads of studies that say you eat less throughout the day. Mm. Um, you are on the health train, so to speak. As soon as you get up and you do that, you're on the health train. You don't want to ruin it. So that's one of the things that I would say from personal experience. I have trained myself to become a morning person, to go to bed earlier, to become a morning person. And actually, I feel so much better for it. And it's, yeah, it's one of yeah. the things that I would totally recommend. And you see a lot of these are going to be interlinked. So I'd say in terms of sleep hygiene as well, try not to eat anything two hours before you go to bed. Don't drink the alcohol, which is disgust. Um, switch off from anything that's going to stimulate you, which includes blue screen, social media, at least two hours before bed as well. And then make sure, you know, your bed's comfy, the right temperature is your bedroom, and that it's as dark as possible. Clean your sheets. Clean your sheets on a, on a regular... This was actually a tip that was given to me by a very good friend saying these are one of the... You know, he listens to the podcast and said, I change my sheets regularly because I like getting into bed and it's a nice experience. So anything that makes sleep a lovely experience, we're all for. Back onto the booze. The booze. Um, the, the drinking. So one of our tips for... Uh, we know that a lot of you out there um, have busy lifestyles. You're working, you're travelling for work. You have to socialise for work. Alcohol, um, sadly, is part of our culture. Um, and there's a real pressure to, to drink um, a lot, actually. So what we always say to clients is, if you know, on a Sunday, if you can look at your week ahead and know when those times are that you are going to be out and about and you have to socialise, plan them. Mm. So know they're happening. Go in forearmed, knowing what your, how many drinks you're going to have. Like, literally... Kind of plan when that's going to happen, what you're going to drink, how many drinks you're going to have, so you feel in control. This is the thing, a lot of us feel out of control when, in the, when they're in those social situations. But plan ahead. Also, opt for the better Drink. drinks, basically. Yeah. So so the white spirits. The, your, your <laughs> white spirits? My, <laughs> clear spirits. <laughs> All right there. The white. <laughs> clear, clear spirits, I think, Claire. Meant like uh, gin and vodka, not... <laughs> Not a trip down B and Q to buy some white spirit. That stuff will, uh, yeah, <laughs> send you to the moon and back. Trust me, I've tried. Get... Um, oh, your gins, dear. your vodkas with like your plain mixers, like your soda oh. waters, your low calorie tonics, um, all, all your dry, dry wines, dry sparkling oh, I'm wines. Still Try and avoid get a double whammy if you have white yeah, spirits. You would. <laughs> Try and avoid the more calorific drinks, like like the beers, the heavy cocktails, uh, stuff like that. Also, we're not saying here, like, don't, don't be spontaneous. You can still be spontaneous. It's more like when your drinking has become a habit, you know, when that same person's like, oh, yeah. let's go for a drink, and you end up doing it, and then you're like, oh, I wish I hadn't done that. Or, you know, getting home and just pouring a glass of wine straight away and then thinking, ugh. So leave room for spontaneity, of course, but just, just try and plan it and be a bit more thoughtful about it. Yeah, and if you're, you know, you get home, you drink with your partner and things like that, actually just use, use each other as a bit of an accountability um, 
piece as well because basically you're feeding off each other so if one of you says look sweetheart we're only going to drink two nights this week that's it on um, mm. monday to thursday we're not going to drink then hold each other accountable to that uh, it's easier when you have that um i know that james yeah. and i do that he was yeah. about to say something i was saying disclaimer we're not saying drink white spirit <laughs> <laughs> He's not going to let that one lie now. It's, gonna, it's just going to go on and on. Right, moving on swiftly. Comfort eating. Mm. Really interestingly, um, again, this is about planning your meals. So a lot of time people, that it's that kind of emotional eating, comfort eating when they get home because they are just reaching for the nearest thing without having planned it. So again, like the alcohol, make sure that you are, you are in control. Take responsibility. Plan your meals ahead. And everyone can do this. Mm. So yeah, people go wrong is where they haven't planned. So yeah, I've done this. Look, you've all intention of eating healthy all week, but you've forgotten to buy the food. You're coming home late. Uh, suddenly that that chicken korma meal deal for one that Ooh. comes in a plastic bag you put in the microwave looks amazing with its naan bread and everything all in. But of course that's going to derail you. Um, so the other thing is just be sensible in your eating. Like you know, it's, it's all one thing to have goals and have sensible eating patterns, but if every meal's leaving you really hungry, listen, there's no point in eating. You know a 400 calorie salad at lunchtime if by two o'clock you're going through a packet of custard creams yeah and that's actually also related to the alcohol thing I, I have seen this a lot please don't be in the habit of saving up your calories from food just so you can drink the wine right. this is bad okay <laughs> the other thing we say on eating is make sure you're drinking enough water yes and we probably need at least two liters a day um a lot of the time when we think we're hungry or when we think we're tired interestingly it's actually like mild dehydration so yeah. keep the water topping up have you said have, have healthy snacks to hand Oh yeah, have healthy snacks to have hand as well. Have healthy snacks to hand. And also, one other thing as well. Um, if you do go home, I, I know this when I lived on my own as well, I'd go home and, you know, eating is a great distraction actually for being bored, as I've said, or feeling a bit lonely or feeling a bit low. And another thing on um, the distraction, I know I've mentioned this already, but with the comfort eating, sometimes we do that when we're um, bored, when we're feeling a bit low or a bit lonely. Um, and one of the great things to do, I know I did this when I used to live on my own, was actually try and find a distraction other than just reaching for the cookies. Um, and I actually did this, it's a good little tip. Write out some of the things that you enjoy doing. So for example, for us women out there, it could be like painting your nails, it could be uh, phoning a friend, it could be organizing a massage, it could be reading a magazine. Put all those little things in a little jar um, on the side and actually, Catch yourself when you're about to go for that comfort food, when you're about to do that habit of behavior, actually catch yourself and go, okay, I'm going to go to my little jar of goodies hmm. and I'm going to pick out something. And even that cut in that normal habitual behavior, even that cut will make you think, hang on a minute, do I really want to do that? Even if you don't like the thing that you pulled out the jar, do I really want to do the comfort eating knowing it's going to take me away from my goal? Thought patterns. So we talked about this, getting stuck in a negative loop. I think the first thing is acknowledge it when it happens. Don't try and pretend that it's not or push it away. Just acknowledge it. Uh, and when you, once you've acknowledged it, then you'll find it easier to deal with. Um, some great things you can do to just kind of put yourself in a more positive mindset is just grab a bit of paper and a pen. Just write three great things that happened today or three yeah. great things I achieved today. Yeah, it's about celebrating the little tiny victories. I say this to my clients all the time. You know, we are so busy looking at what we what we don't. And this is, again, ha habits of thought patterns. Mm. Looking at the things we don't have rather than the things that, that we do. So actually, just take that moment, like Jane says, three things that have gone really, really well today, that I've done really, really well. And the, it doesn't matter if they're really, really small. A step forward is better than a step backwards. And... Great things are achieved by small little steps, so make sure that you recognise those. Yeah, just like when that happens, like Claire's saying, just find something positive to chip in. Like you're basically intervening and intercepting with, with a positive cycle instead. Um, another one that we're going to give you is obviously the digital side. So um, we, we have to be really, really controlling with ourselves on this. I actually have some of these apps on my phone that actually control and monitor how much time you've been on social media and things like that really eye-opening like mm. really awakening for me there's one called moment and off time so make sure like again awareness is power you might not even know how long you are spending scrolling through social media channels and it's it's quite terrifying mm. 
also clean your feed. So listen, a lot of us don't take the time to do this, but you know, over the years, probably added stuff, added people, added stuff, and you see these things coming up, and some of that stuff will annoy you on a regular basis. Yeah. And here's it, hands up, I admit it, sometimes we even get off on being annoyed by that thing. Oh, there's that annoying thing again. Yeah. <laughs> it's not helping you. No. So just, you know, flip the thing, you go, I don't want to see this. It will disappear from your feed for good. And look at putting good stuff in your feed for like find motivational yeah. stuff, positive stuff. Like that's my feed is completely different now to how it was like two years ago. And totally. Yeah, totally. much more positive place. Um, also, another one on this is centre yourself in the morning. I, again, I do this, James does this. Centre yourself in the morning before you go on your phone, mm. into email, social media, whatever. And when I say centre, um, we've talked about the rituals that we do. Um, we make sure that we get up, make sure that our, we put in the reps in our mindset before we open ourselves up to the pressures of the world. Control your mindset and you're going to win throughout the day. I can't tell you yeah. like how much this has had a positive impact this in our life. This one is so, is so important. Listen, if you, if you wake up, and we, this happens with so many clients, and we used to do it, if you wake up and the first thing you do is reach for your phone to see what's there, you've already like given control yes. of your mood to an outside force. Yes. Like, just don't look at it. Don't look at it. Centre yourself first. Yeah, stay in your own lane. Here's the thing, stay in your own lane, know what your day's going to look like, be intentional before you go out into the world, and that means the digital world. Last thing on this, uh, linked back to the first one about bed, just just don't look two hours before bed. Two reasons, number one, it'll just help you calm down and switch off. Number two, the blue light from devices actually stimulates your awake hormone, so we want to just stop those two hours before bed. Yeah, absolutely. And it also, James, talking about that cortisol rise. You know, we don't want to be doing that before we go to bed. And that whole stress of looking at the phone raises your cortisol. Um, so, the not having time. Mm. Oh, the habit of saying you don't have time. Or actually filling your time with useless things. What can we do um, to make sure, especially around the exercise um, element, you know, prioritising... I, I don't have time to exercise... Prioritising exercise is a habit to get into. Putting it in your diary. We've talked about, you know, on a Sunday, looking ahead. Make sure you actually write this in your diary, okay? Writing it down kind of makes you commit to it a hell of a lot more. And I'd say it's not just exercise. We're obviously coming from the exercise perspective. But anything you want to achieve, you know, you can just chunk that thing down. You want to write a book? Chunk it down. Mm. For like 15 minutes a day. Okay, it might still take you a long time, but... In a year, you'll be much farther ahead than if you just spent those 15 minutes watching television. Yeah. So just chunk things down. And also, James and I plan our day ahead. So we look at the week ahead, and then we plan out the night before, we plan the next day. And actually, if you're really not sure about where you're spending time, do a timesheet. Mm. I know this sounds like, but in your, you do it at work, probably, perhaps. Why aren't you doing it for other areas of your life as well? So find where you can make the time. Not find the time, make the time in your life for the ex. Like James said um, earlier on, fifteen minutes three times a week of doing some some form of exercise in the morning is all you need. That doesn't take very much time. Prioritize it. Mm. Which leads us nicely to the last point, which kind of is is a summation of all of these, I guess. Which is, you know, the full on and then not. It's about actually just living your life in balance, um, which is what all these habits relate to like not not being extreme in one side or the other yeah. but finding the rhythm and the routines that work for you to help you lead like a calmer balanced life and help you achieve your goals sustainably yeah because i think when anything's out of whack when you're focusing too much on for example the exercise too much on like dieting too much on work too much of that when anything's out of whack you're gonna be out of whack mm. Um, and your habits are just going to be, they're going to be leading you. So the whole point of this podcast is basically to let you know that we all, all of us, lovely people out there, have these things that are going to take us off our goals. They are patterns of behaviour, habits of thought that, you know, that are all there for every single person. And it's just bringing awareness to it, making you realise that, you know, you're not alone. And then hopefully just giving you some hints and tips that we use and our clients use that can just start to adjust. You know, don't expect everything overnight. Don't expect too much of yourself. Even if you take one of these, it can start to shift your life um, dramatically mm. for sure. 
And even if they feel like awkward at first, just stick with it. You, you can't do something once and expect it to have worked. You need to just keep going with it, keep going with it, keep going with it until it does become a new habit and it will do. That's the thing. Be patient with yourself. Impatience is what drags most of us away from the things we want to be, do and have in our life. So be patient with yourself. Adopt one or two of these. And as always, we would love your feedback. We love your support. Please reach out to us. Let us know what you want to hear more of. And that's it for today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sending so much love. Bye. You've been listening to the Midlife Mentors with Claire and James Davis. We'd love to hear from you. So drop us a line at info at themidlifementors.com with any questions or topic suggestions. And make sure you join us on our Facebook page and YouTube channel. You can find us under The Midlife Mentors.